Okay, so at this point, we have essentially finished the annual portion of promotional planning. What we've, what the main things that we've looked at so far are, what are our ups and downs, right? We've looked at the idea here that um, some months we have bad months historically, some months are good months historically, and kind of challenged that concept of, well, let's put a lot more focus on the down month to try to make them good months, right? Now, why did we, why did we challenge that focus? Give me, give me the reminder again. Why did we challenge that? The whole idea of let's put a lot more focus on the months that are historically not good and less focus on the months that are historically bad so we can get that revenue up in the bad months. Okay, but but if I am if I am not doing any promotions of revenue generating activities during months that are historically bad months, I'm not generating any additional revenue in those months. Why? Why would I do that? Okay, for to focus on relational. Okay. Yeah, so you can generate some revenue during those months, but you got to remember that every business is affected by things like seasonalities, right? Why would I try? Why would I try to promote heating repair in June? Are you going to make a lot of sales of heating repair in June? No. no. So why would I even bother trying to do that? It's doomed to fail from the beginning, right? Makes no sense. Same thing. Every business has cycles. So some businesses have bad months because of the nature of the business. It's not just because, well, people just don't like to buy during that time. It may be. Swimming pool supplies. You typically aren't buying chlorine in the middle of the winter. Right? So when you look at these things, we can see some months have up months, like in, the, in our example with the electrical parts, right? So you're going to find around major holidays, holiday times, those kind of things tend to do better. Why? Because industries have shutdowns. They do shutdowns so they can do maintenance and those kinds of things. That's where they need a lot of parts. Outside of that, in the months where there really aren't that many, um, aren't that many, holidays or no major holidays you tend to find lower revenue right so even with that kind of stuff take take the industrial side out look at your regular electricians that are doing general commercial work right so a lot of times unless it's an emergency need or whatever these guys aren't really as active during the winter months as they may be during the summer months they're gonna by the very nature be more active during hotter months Right? Warmer months, springtime, summertime, fall. Right? They're going to be more active during those times. Why? There's going to be more construction. There. Typically, there's more construction going on. When you have more commercial construction going on, you have more commercial electricians out there needing parts and bits and pieces and stuff. Right? So we look at that. In our example, in our example we have some down months. Right? January. Well, January makes sense. You got all these businesses that shut down in this target market, all these businesses that shut down around Christmas, they gotta get back to work, right? So they've already fixed a lot of stuff, right? They did that in December, which historically December is a good month in our example, right? So they did all that in December. They don't have a lot of breakage in those kind of things. So it doesn't really pay us to try to focus on selling them a lot more stuff when there's not historically a need because they just finished it. Right, May, kind of the same thing. May is May historically in this example is the worst month. Now, why would why do you think May would be the worst month? They already have their projects lined up. They purchase what they need to fulfill those projects that are in process. Yeah, you got ramp up, 
right? So you got ramp up to certain things. You've got you've got your your um, March and those kind of things tend to be okay. February actually um, February historically has actually been a pretty good month uh, for the company. Why do you think February might be a pretty good month? That's right. We got new budgets, so we got capital expenditures and things that we want to do. We're getting new machinery. You don't. You're not usually doing that stuff in January. You got to see what what's going to play out, right? So we look at this stuff in business. In, in more of the May type side of things, what we're looking at there is the idea um, in this kind of business that they're getting ready for end of June, first of July. Let's do a, look at doing a shutdown around the fourth of July so we can get this stuff going, right? So they're getting ready for it. It's a planning time more than it is an actual due time, right? So you're gonna have some sales during these times. It's just not gonna peak, right? September, same thing, right? September historically was the second worst month. May was the worst, September second worst, January is the third worst, right? So why do you think September might be a bad month? Okay. In the third quarter ending. Yeah. Look at a um, if you look at a variety of businesses. By the way, end of August through September for lots of businesses actually tend to be a bad time for business, right? For lots of businesses. Now, some businesses do really well during that time. Businesses that sell school supplies, for example, right? That tends to be a hot time for them. So we see, we see for a lot of businesses, they actually have slowdowns during August and September because of things like schools going back in, right? Everything gets a lot more busy. You start seeing a lot more traffic on the roads during this time, right? So, so there's a variety of factors that are not always direct factors that affect these things, right? Lots of times it's indirect factors. This is why it's important for us to go back and look at average historics. Right? So when we look at average, um, historical average revenue um, during certain months, there's lots of things that we can look at that we can explain why. So it, in other words, if, if historically May is the worst month we have and there are a variety of factors that are beyond our control that makes that the worst month, historically, right? And if you keep looking at it year after year after year after year, what you'll find is you find a lot of businesses that will try to ramp up their advertising during that time and it doesn't work well. They may get a little bit more revenue, but they're not getting a lot more revenue, right? And so they, they end up spending a lot of money for a very small ROI, if any ROI, right? And it's, again, it's because of factors that are outside of control, right? So that being... That's good. That's why. That's why it is we plan the non-RGAs during these times, right? So you've got brand. You've got brand awareness if you're doing advertising campaigns, right? Um, in email marketing, you're you're looking more at, at, at not just brand awareness but continued visibility, right? So we look at those kind of things. So we plan our non-RGAs during those times. These are the big things that we want to get out during those times that that aren't directly to generate revenue, but they're indirectly meant to generate revenue, right? And so it's why if we're looking at whether it's um, releasing a book or video series for YouTube or whatever it may be, projects within the business that need to happen, do it during the slow months, right? Don't be trying to do it during your busiest month, right? Because it's not going to get, it's not going to happen, right? You prep for these things all year long, and you get bits and pieces of these things all year long, but you do releases during these particular times, right? Now, so now that we've gotten this annual stuff done, though, we know we know that in, in our example here, January being uh, one bad month, we want to distribute a series. We want to create a four-part video series and distribute that, launch it um, in January on investment recovery. Right? That's a great time to do it. So we're thinking about these things. May, we want to distribute a how-to video series, right? 
So this is, this is another one of those things for all these people that are within the target market, right? So the investment recovery is targeted more at your industrial market, right? So these big businesses that are looking at, well, we've got to swap out machines. We've got to swap out machinery and stuff from time to time that don't think about, you know, typically they'll cart this stuff off to the dump, right? More than they will look at, well, you know, we could sell that and at least use a little bit of that money to help offset some of the cost of the new machinery, right? Let's affect our bottom line right here. So again, valuable for the business, right? The, the how-to series, why, well, who's the how-to series going to be good for? Service guys, maintenance men, your general electricians, those kind of things. The people that are dealing with this stuff on a regular basis that may have seen it, they may have not seen it, but you know these are the guys that like the refreshers. Or maybe they're, they're having to deal with something that they haven't quite seen before because there's a lot of different parts out there, right? A lot of different things out there that can happen. So get that out there. And then in September, September, we said we wanted to distribute a series on electrical catastrophes. Now, who's that good for? Planners, planners, preventive maintenance guys. Planners, preventive maintenance guys. Okay. And who else? Yeah, virtually everybody. Who doesn't want to see stuff blow up, right? Who doesn't want to see the after effects of a massive explosion or a big fire, right? It's, it kind of goes back to that whole, it's a train wreck. Everybody's got to stop, right? So it, it's the same thing with me the other day. I'm sitting on the interstate, and I'm, I'm like, why is it so slow? Traffic is so slow. Is there a wreck in our lane? No, it was in the other lane, yes. I was going northbound. The wreck was in the southbound lane, and it was just a bottleneck from everybody looky-loo, right? So it's frustrating, but people want to see this stuff, right? So that's good for a general brand awareness thing. It's also good from a, the idea of if I have the capacity um, in my business to be able to create something that would be related to my business, but also has a potential to go viral, right? For that general brand awareness, what do I want to create, yeah. right? And they're still adding value. Don't let this happen to you. Absolutely, absolutely. So you can get a lot of people watching it. You can get a lot of people watching it. You can get a lot of traffic on it. But the people that take action on it will be the people within the target market, right? Okay. So we did that. So we're looking at now we've got January, February, March, April, May, June. July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, so we know now that January is non-RGA, May, non-RGA. And then September is non-RGA, right? Okay. So the next thing that we want to look at is we want to look at within these months, right? Within these months that are left, what do we have going on? We got the how-tos. We got the catastrophic Okay. Well, that's the months that we've already got right here. I'm saying the months with our blanks. What do we have going on? Right? So, February, what happens in February? Yeah, ordering their products and inventory for the upcoming project. Okay. Maybe, but we're talking about promotional planning right now. Okay. What happens in February? Ladies, what happens in February? Valentine's, Valentine's Day. <laughs> you guys suck. You disgust me, men. It's the first thing God. Valentine's Day happens in February. What else happens in February? Uh, my anniversary. Your anniversary. Nobody, nobody, none of your clients really care about that mess. Yeah. Groundhog's Day. Oh. Yeah. So President's Day, day after Valentine's Day, right? So, so you got Groundhog Day, Valentine's Day, President's Day. So if we're looking at February as a month where we're going to do promotions, we have options, 
right? We can do a Groundhog Day promotional. We could do a Valentine's Day promotional. We could do a President's Day promotional. Where do you normally see President's Day sales? There's two places that always come to mind that advertise heavily for President's Day. Mattresses and car lots, absolutely. Yeah. You always see that. Big President's Day sale! Buy your mattresses now, right? You see that kind of junk. I remember when I actually looked at a newspaper. You know, you used to see that you know, about every Feb February. Big, big signs all at the top of the page. President's Day sale. Look at all the cars we have for President's Day sale. Thirty-eight dollars off. Yeah, it's a steal. Right? So, okay. So when we're thinking about holidays, um, and when we're thinking about holidays, we also want it to make sense. Right? This is something that a lot of times people don't necessarily think about. Right? we got to make it make sense. It needs to be able to relate to the business. Just because there's a holiday doesn't necessarily mean I want to do a promotion around that specific holiday. There are loads and loads and loads of holidays. Matter of fact, every single month technically has some form of holiday in it. And most months have many of them. Right? You've got it. You've got it. So, and, and, and when I use the term holiday, I am using it loosely. So it's anything, you know, it's National Grandson's Day, right? Um, Whitley was posting something, some pictures of, of uh, Laylin on Facebook the other day. Happy National's Daughter, National Daughter's Day. What? There's a National Daughter's Day? Really? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Right? And the day after his yeah. And that's what she posted. I have no idea, right? Because there's way too much of this junk out there. It's literally like, like you can just about look at any day on the calendar and there's some kind of, whether it's awareness or a holiday or some kind of celebration for something. Jeez Louise. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, pick a day and it'll give you a list of things that are that day, right? So... You got to make it make sense, though, is, is the key thought process here, right? So if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at holidays and those kind of things, then I want to be able to, I want to be able to make that make sense, right? So, for example, like in the electrical field, does, can I make Valentine's Day make sense? I don't, I don't see that. Maybe more so President's Day, you might have a tie-in there. You might could do a tie-in there. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your new GFCI outlet, baby. You're welcome. <laughs> no, no. Um, but you also got to relate it to your target market. Obviously, you wouldn't be marketing to the spouses for Valentine's Day. I mean, you know, do you love your business this Valentine's Day? Make sure it doesn't burn to the ground, right? No. In fact, in my thought process, the first thing that actually came to mind for me was Groundhog Day, right? You remember that movie several years ago, Groundhog Day, with Bill Murray in it, oh, yeah. right? That, that is, that's me, you know, that's, that's me looking at that. I actually was thinking about this the other day um, because somebody had posted a meme online and it was like Groundhog Day and it's like 2020, talking about 2020 and how it just seems like stuff keeps repeating itself. You know, I'm like, oh, this is great. Another day of COVID and, and it's Groundhog Day. You know, it's supposed to be 15 days of lockdown. We're on day 347, you know. Like, okay, great. But I can relate Groundhog Day more to the electrical world, right? Does it seem like you're doing the same things over and over, right? If I put it, if I put it in the email, uh, like a picture of Bill Murray, you know, at the, like at the end of the movie where he's holding the groundhog and this, that, and the other, a lot of guys have seen that you know it's not new right so it's a lot of people have seen this thing they can relate to that picture right seems like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again right don't make the same mistakes over and over and over again right make sure that you get the right parts make sure that you have have the right stuff i can i can see a promotional around groundhog day way more than i can in this industry way more than i can a valentine's day right all right so february our Groundhog Day. So when we are 
when we are talking about monthly promotional planning, the first thing, the first thing that I tend to want to look at is the holidays, right? Holidays on the calendar and, and attribute those holidays to specific months. Why? <coughs> Do what? Okay, relatability is part of it. Okay, but what am I what am I going to do with that? What do you think we're going to do with it? Uh, use it for saving. Could. What do you see at major holidays? Sales. Sales. This is not rocket science, people. Let me just throw this out there. I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm really just, this is kind of throwing it low to you here. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm keeping it about as easy as I can. You see holidays, you see holiday sales, right? In email marketing, one of the strategies is flash sales, right? What's a flash sale? It's an unannounced just because it is a limited time with a steep discount. Okay? So I want to look at my flash sales first. If I'm going to run flash sales around holidays, those types of things, I want to get those things planned out first. I can begin to plan the rest of the month around that. Right? The other things that I may do in promoting that. But essentially, I want to be able to offer, if, if I know in any given month, I'm going to offer a deep discount, 30% off, 40% off, 50% off, 99.9% .9 off, whatever. Hey, take all my stuff out of my store for free. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what it is. If I'm, but if I'm going to start with something, yeah, you know, I, I know, I want to know the day that that's going to hit because I then can go backwards and plan up to that. Right? And then I can go forward after that. Make sense? Groundhog Day is February 2nd. So Groundhog Day, February 2nd, you could have a 22.2% sale. You could have. Make it make sense. You could. Or you could do a 31.67% sale. <laughs> you like the 22.2? Okay. What's the 31.67? 31.67. Pi. Yeah, 0.3167, right? Repeating. It's a number that never ends. Groundhog Day. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I ain't got there yet. Is that in February? No. That's in March. Uh -huh. So there's any number of things that we could do with this kind of stuff, right? But this is, this is why it's important for us to get this written down first. What are, what are effectively we're going to celebrate in any month? Now, is it possible that we may have more than one flash sale in a given month? As long as it makes sense. Okay? As long as it makes sense. Right? You don't want everything to be a flash sale. Right? You don't want every time, every time you send an email to someone it to be a flash sale. Why? Well, it's, it's gimme, 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 but what, eventually what happens, right, is you get that Harbor Freight response or the Hobby Lobby response, right? Hobby Lobby did that whole 40% off coupon so frequently that they ultimately ended up having to just paste the stinking coupon on the website. So anytime you go into Hobby Lobby, you just pull, a, pull up the coupon off the website and your phone and you get 40% off your, uh, your item, right? And so they did, they essentially trained their customer base to know when these things will happen. Just like with Hobby Lobby as well. Picture frames on sale 50% off this week. They will not be 50% off next week, but they will be on sale 50% off the following week. So if I'm going to pick, buy a picture frame, I'm not going to buy it on the week that it's not on sale, but it's every other week. Picture frames are 50% off, right? It's consistent, right? If I generate that kind of consistencies, what, I, what actually happens is I end up messing up my, my sales base by making it too predictable, right? It happens too often. Harbor Freight does the same thing with coupons in, in email, right? And I, I love me some Harbor Freight. I shop it there quite frequently, right? Lots of good deals. But the thing that I know with Harbor Freight is you wait long enough, there's going to be a coupon. It doesn't matter what it is, right? And so there'll be a coupon. 
And then you get those coupons every, so, every what, weekly, I think, now, that you get 20% off. Right? So you just get the coupon, get the coupon out of your email, get the 20% off your order deal, and walk in, and there, there it is. Right? I also know that there are some standard things, right? Because I see this stuff so often. I, I can tell you with a degree of certainty that 40% of their sales every week will be the same set of products. Right? It's the same set of products. Not, it's not different products. It's not new products. It's, it's whatever. It's the same set of products, right? It's that, that $3 screwdriver that I'm going to get a coupon for 99 cents. You know what I'm saying? Those are good screwdrivers. Not griping about it because I, usually I see the coupon for 99 cents. Limit four. I'll buy four of them, right? Why I don't need that many screwdrivers? I buy four of them because they're 99 cents and they make great stock, stocking stuffers for family, right? So one of those things men in my family tend to appreciate those kinds of things right multi-use screwdrivers so but i know that i don't want to do that That, that's not something we want to do we don't necessarily want to create that consistency so it's not it's not that we want to have flash sales around every single holiday it's uh, that we want to make it make sense right and we can do more than one in a month as long as it makes sense if it doesn't make sense then no more than one a month right all right March, what do we have in March? St. Patty's Day, right? And Pi Day, thank you. Yeah. And Pi Day, right? So, can I make St. Patrick's Day make sense? Okay. Okay. Well, all refurbished is about 100% of his inventory. Um, so, <laughs> well, they do know that. That's the that's kind of the kick behind the website. That's the whole thing is you're buying it. You know, you're buying mostly not new stuff that has been redone, and you're getting it way less than what the retail price would be. Right. So that's kind of the shtick. <laughs> okay. Could be. You know, luck of the Irish has hit you today. You know, yeah, you put out a, a pot of gold. Yeah, make a make a little graphic that goes on the email with a pot of gold, <coughs> but instead of gold in the pot, it's little breakers and stuff. Right? A rainbow with the yeah. So yeah, I mean, you can you can make so you sit down and think about it. You can make a lot of this stuff make sense, right? It's a lot easier actually than Pi Day. Pi Day is Pi Day is a good celebration for your like your math nerds and those kind of things. Right, so you know people people love to celebrate that kind of thing, and so you got to be careful. You got to be careful with the market on what you're choosing. Just like in February, Valentine's Day doesn't make sense for you know electrical parts, right? All right, so April in April we've got Easter. We got April Fool's Day. Probably wouldn't want to do that. You want to stay away from flash sales on April Fool's Day because you know it's one of those things. Ah, uh, crap. It says it's 50% off. I added it to the cart, and it's full price. April Fool's. Uh, dang it. They charged my credit card twice. Yeah, April Fool's. Yeah, no. So, yeah, so we kind of want to, we, we typically want to stay away from that with the with this stuff. I mean, you could do a spin on it. Hey, this sells no joke. You know, no fooling around here. Um, so you could do something like that. But big, the big stuff, you got Easter and Earth Day um, in April, right? So... Can you do something that makes sense around Easter? You need to do something that makes sense around Easter because that's a, that is a major, major holiday, right? You don't want to skip out on the major holidays. You can kind of skimp on the minor stuff. And yes, Valentine's Day is a minor holiday, not a major holiday. Um, you know, the, they don't close the government for Valentine's Day. So even though they do for a lot of other junk, that makes no sense, right? But that being said, you know, so we want to do something in April around Easter. Definitely. Okay. It could be tied into a promotion. I would not tie it into a flash sale, right? 
Okay, so but think about it, think about it, think about it. Okay, so we have flash sales as one thing. I said we want to plan for that first, but what is another kind of promotion that we're going to offer? Yes, awareness promotions. Okay, awareness promotions. So actually, that whole Earth Day deal, that Earth Day deal, in my mind, would be great. So remember, in January, we looked at releasing the series on investment recovery, right? So if you got Earth Day, you've got Earth Day over here, and you've got all these stats on how much is wasted, how much goes to landfills needlessly, what could be recycled, what could be reused. You could do a week-long series leading up to Earth Day, right? Because, let's see, this next year, that'll be on April 22nd, okay? So you could do a week-long series, email series where you're releasing some stats every day, right? That would go to a segment of your market, right? The industrial segment, that's where you're targeting the investment recovery stuff, that talks about this is how much is wasted, this is how much is this. And then on Earth Day, you got an email that goes out. This, that's a happy Earth Day email. By the way, you've gotten all this stuff on what's wasted. Don't waste, right? We buy this. Right, yeah. Before you throw it away, let us know. We may be able to reuse it, right? Help save the earth. Is, is it every day for a week, two months, no? Nope. Depends on how you're doing it. Yeah. Okay, so here, here's one of the funny things. A lot of it depends on the quality of the emails and how you do it, right? So we've got this client that um, I set up some campaigns for and, and this that, and the other. And the client actually started griping because they had, there were emails that were going out. It was every day for 21 days, right? So it started out as the, this, this particular series, every day for 21 days. After 21 days, it went to every three days, right? And then four weeks after that, it went to every five days. And then, and then it went to every two weeks. Then it went to once a month until essentially that series tapered down. And so, well, we're getting complaints all the time. People saying that they're getting too many emails and blah, 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 blah. Okay. How many complaints have you gotten? I don't know. It's just a lot. Track it. Track it. Four. They had actually gotten four complaints. In their mind, it seemed like a lot. Four people saying they were getting too many emails. Out of 4,500 people on their list, is it statistically significant? I don't care. Get off the list. You know? You don't want to get the emails? Unsubscribe. Okay? That's the real question. you got to have... You gotta have content for it. The the question is, is how many statistics do you have? On oh, that as far as Glenfield type. Uh-huh. Probably six. Then you got after Okay, bit. then you got six days worth. Yeah. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. The one of the things one of the problems in email too that a lot of people have with that is they want to write these emails that are like this long. And people don't consume that. People consume more stuff like this, right? You'll click it, you'll read it, you'll click off of it, you'll do what you need to do, right? But if you're doing an awareness campaign on this kind of stuff, you want short, sweet, to the point, right? So you're actually better to have more frequent during a time period, right? It's not like you're doing it every single day of the year, right? You could. There are plenty of places out there that do that. They email every day. So one of the things that we looked at not long ago is actually um, is list retention, right? List retention. So what happens is your list ages over time, right? And so, you know, people come off the list for whatever reason. You get undeliverables for whatever reason. You know, we've talked in the past about some percentage of people change their email every year. Some percentage change their email every six months. You get people that you've done business with that no longer work for that business, Right? So there's lots of reasons why you have attrition in, in an email list. But one of the big factors, one of the big factors that actually leads to um, unsubscription rates 
in email marketing is the frequency of emailing. And actually, lower frequency, you get more attrition than higher frequency. Yeah, so what happens here, what happens here is, is, in fact, in the studies that we've looked at, if you're not emailing people within your list at least every two to three days, they start forgetting about your business. Two to three days. That's how short our attention span is these days. Yeah. That's how short our attention span is these days. But that's also why we have to continuously build content and continuously build value and be able to break things down. But it, it kind of goes back to that idea, too, when you're, things that you would do on a website, you won't do an email, right? I can do, um, I've got on our website, for example, a list of 35 lead generation strategies. That's one of our, our blog articles, right? So it's, it's strategies that can be used to, to generate leads. So I'm not going to put that bulleted list in one email. I would separate that out into 35 emails with a little bit of additional information that goes along with it. All right? Tip one, you know, lead generation strategy, tip one, do this, right? Here's how you do it. It's tip two, that's 35 emails. It's not one email. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, because remember, a person, a person may spend more time on a blog article if it's interesting. They may spend more time reading that. On an email, they're not going to spend as much time, right? It's why it is that it doesn't pay you necessarily. If you're, if you're sending out blog articles as a newsletter to people, it doesn't really pay you to send out the full article. Send out a snippet with a link to it, right? They read the snippet. They determine if they want to read the whole thing, and then they'll go to the website, right? That's why that's used as a segmentation tactic, Okay. Yeah, too long didn't read. Absolutely. So the the thing is, and, and it's very it's the most true with email marketing, even more so than social media, right? Because people get so many emails on a given day, they need to be able to consume quickly, right? Um, think email more like Twitter. Right, the the value in Twitter for most people has been short and sweet, short and sweet, short and sweet. Right, so email we want to try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. Right, give value, give information, get to the point, and you know, give me something to click on if I want to move further. If they click it, then you. If you. Click, if they click it, you're tracking it. Right. I get those all the time, absolutely, and I never read them. No. I never read them. I tr what I try to do is scan to hit the highlights, right. but there again, most of those are not written. It's why I don't click on 99.99% of them, because most of them are not even written so I could scan and see the highlights. Right. Right? Yeah, the highlights to, make to make, yeah, to make me want to get to it. Or as Mark said, you get a teaser, a little bit of information, a teaser that sends me to somewhere else that where I'm going to sit a little longer and consume more, right? So it's, it's kind of that, that same general thought process, right? I mean, even it's, it's even one of the challenges in our teachings and the things that we do, right? Most of these are about an hour. And so, you know, a lot of people these days, well, I, I can sit down and watch a five-minute video, but to watch an hour-long training session is, is a lot more difficult, right? So it's, it, it becomes one of those things that for us over time, um, it becomes advantageous for us to take and cut it into smaller pieces, right? And just do more of a series that maybe end up being an hour, but you can consume a bit and a piece at a time, right? So same thing with email. A person typically would rather have a higher frequency with a lower content than they would have a lower frequency with a higher content, okay? As long as it's consumable, yeah. right? And that's the challenge. Right. So May, we've got Cinco de Mayo, we've got Mother's Day, we've got Memorial Day in May. We can do those, we can do those kinds of things, right? But we are non-RGA, so we're not going to do flash sales in May.
right? May's our non-RGA month. We're not going to bother with flash sales and those kind of things. So what I'm going to look at for those holidays is actually planning, planning the distribution of whatever our, our non-RGA is around that particular thing, right? So May is, May is the how-to series, right? So you got Cinco de Mayo, Mother's Day, Memorial Day. Did you know, by the way, just as a side note, do you know that Cinco de Mayo is celebrated by far more in the United States than it is in Mexico? Did you know that? Well, it, it is a Mexican holiday in essence, but it is not what, what most Americans think is though it's the Mexican Independence Day it's the, as, as the same as our Fourth of July. And that's not really what it was. It was a celebration of a, of a major battle where the Mexicans defeated the French, right? And so um, Cinco de Mayo is actually one of the greatest marketing schemes of all time. So Cinco de Mayo was nothing until the beer manufacturers came in and started promoting it, right? So it's a beer holiday. That's what it is, right? So should we, I'm not an advocate for pushing alcohol consumption, but should we use it in a, in a way? How could we use that? I wouldn't necessarily, because, um, I mean, remember, May, you got Cinco de Mayo, you got Mother's Day, you got Memorial Day, right? You got what? May the 4th, yeah. Um, so you have that as a, a minor holiday. You could do something You could do something around those kind of things. I mean, my thought process, Memorial Day would be, if you're distributing a how-to series, right? Memorial, remember, right? You know, so, you know, let's, yeah. So you've got things like that, right? You just got to make it make sense. As long as it can make sense, then people will buy into it. If it doesn't make sense, if it's too far of a stretch, people aren't going to buy into it. Right? I mean, I could make Star Wars Day make sense. It's a stretch, right? But I could make it make sense. You got the force, may the force be with you. You know, I've got, you know, I've got essentially, you know, let me come up with a picture of Luke Skywalker holding a lightsaber, but instead of a lightsaber, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it into like a circuit breaker with electricity coming out the end of it instead of the, the laser. There you go. I mean, yeah. I mean, there, there's there's loads of ways you could do it. You could get Christian to take a picture in a cape, you know, with with one of those poles. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean, there are ways to be able to make a lot of things make sense. Some things you just it's too far of a stretch, right? So you just got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Our next one is June. June, you got Flag Day, you got Father's Day, right? Yeah, Flag Day doesn't really make sense. I, 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 it would be too far of a stretch for me to make sense for anything. Um, Father's Day. I mean, you can make that make sense. You know, have a Father's Day sale. You see that's very common, right? Um, so you see Father's Day sale. And, and again, not to be masochistic or anything like that. You know, misogynist, whatever it is they call it these days. Um, you know, promoting males in any given industry, but by and far the vast majority of people that work in the electrical field are male. Okay, by and far. So it's a little easier for that to make, um, for that kind of stuff to make sense. You know, hey, for Father's Day, get you, you know, pick you something out on the website, 30% off, whatever, right? So, I mean, there, like I said, there's ways to make that make sense. Um, July. July, we've got Independence Day. That's really the only thing that happens in July. Right? You got to do Independence Day. Why do you got to do Independence Day? Major holiday. Okay. It is a major holiday. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You can make it make sense, right? Um, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have an ex have a picture of an explosion in a fireworks factory. You know, that'd be kind of cool. You know, you tie it in that tie it in that way, right? <clears throat> yeah. You overlay some fireworks in the back of it, right? So if you could do that, the transformer exploding at night with fireworks in the background, it's amazing what you can do with Photoshop. You get good at it, right? <clears throat> but the you know the the thought process here is also the fact that people people expect retail 
um, any kind of retailer um, to have an Independence Day sale. And it's kind of like a Christmas sale. It's kind of like a Black Friday type sale. It's an expectation, right, of the consuming yeah, it's an expectation of the consuming public. You, you know, President's Day mattress sales have been going around so long. If a, if you got a mattress store that doesn't have a President's Day sale, it's like, what's wrong with you? Are you guys? Yeah. Uh-huh. I love my president. Why don't you give me a discount? Right. All right. August. What do we have in August? There are no major holidays in August. There are really no holidays in August. August has back to school. I'm going to write that down there just a second. Does that, can we make that make sense? It's kind of a stretch. I'd have to, I'd have to think about that one a minute. To be able to make that make sense. Actually, if August were a bad month, August would be the month that, if, if it were one of the worst months, August would be the month that I would release the how-to videos. Really. Back to school. I mean, that's an easy, that's, that's an easy right there. Okay, you could do dog days. You could do something like that. Um, so, all right. We got September. Like I said, we're skipping. September's got Labor Day, right? So we're going to focus non RGA. September, um, we talked about catastrophes, right? So that would be more of a consumptive. You may, you may um, lead up to, right? So you may give it a few days and lead up to Labor Day when people are at home and release the big consumptive, right? For the catastrophe stuff. That'd be kind of a cool thing to do. October. Halloween. Halloween and Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day. I don't agree with either of those, by the way. Just throwing that out there. I'm... Look how quick she went to Indigenous Peoples Day. I'm offended, quite frankly. I did. I mean, it hurt my heart just a little. Right. Yeah. You should go back and read the post that I posted on Facebook about that. I think you just do that all the time. Someone made a song about it. Well, it was, um, I made a post on Facebook. Somebody had, um, matter of fact, my niece had posted a picture, and it was a picture of this guy who was a Native American holding a picture of Columbus. You know, this is, and it's, the caption was like, it's supposed to be, you know, National um, Indigenous Peoples Day. And I thought it was really funny because you wouldn't you didn't notice it if you didn't pay attention right but so you got christopher columbus in the picture and you got the you got the boat in the background but there's arrows in christopher columbus's back right it's easy to skip over that and i thought it was funny at first because it's like okay should have killed columbus is what you're getting at and all right things would be quite different i, I can imagine that but then i got to thinking about it and you know christopher columbus didn't land in america right you know, yeah. Well, even even him thinking it was in India, it still wasn't in America. He landed in Haiti, what's now known as Haiti, right? And so it's not, it's not even. I mean, Columbus Day in the United States is kind of retarded anyway. In just in that aspect of it, why are we even celebrating that? He didn't land in the U.S. He didn't land in anything that would be related to the U.S. He landed in Haiti. And then we celebrate, and of course, um, matter of fact, there were an interesting fact, I'll have to cut this out later, the interesting fact on this is there was some documentation that came out within the last 10 years, actually, some lost documentation that was found. So, you know, Ferdinand and Isabella, so Columbus was not from Spain, he was not Spanish, most people will say he was Italian, he really wasn't, he was from uh, Geneva, right, or Genoa at the time, and which was its own country, right? And so he went to Spain because everybody else laughed him out, right? And Ferdinand and Isabella said, yeah, we'll give you some money to go do that. We'll get all of it, and you get a percentage, right? You get to keep 10% of whatever you get, right? And so he comes over, and people talk about, you know, people want to talk about the fact that, oh, he was mass killing the natives and this, that, and the other. And no, he was actually taking them as slaves and taking them back and selling. You start killing all the people as you're killing your own revenue source. It doesn't make sense. 
right? So it didn't happen the way most people on Facebook this year were going on and on and on about it. But that was, that was as Paul Harvey says, only part of the story. The rest of the story, right, is the fact that a lot of the killing actually that happened happened kind of as an oopsie, right? It wasn't directly related to him, nor was that his own command, his command, right? And so you had issues with those kind of things. And, and matter of fact, they thought that certain, um, certain tribes were completely wiped out, but they found within the last several years that they weren't. Actually, they left and went to what's now Puerto Rico, right? And DNA tests and those kind of things have found, uh, found all of this out, right? But they also found out that Columbus wasn't quite the guy that everybody thought he was. He was actually more of a tyrant, right? He was, he was basically the Hitler of his day in his area. That's why, that's why eventually he was forced to leave in chains. He was arrested and forced to leave. Now, granted, he got back to Spain, he was released, but um, you know, it's, things don't happen quite the, quite the same. It doesn't make quite the same story in your, what, fourth grade or fifth grade um, history books. But besides that, so we don't want to celebrate Columbus Day. We don't want to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day either because those are not people that are indigenous to our country, in fact. Not about the Native Americans. So, that being said, let's go for Halloween. All right? Now, can we make Halloween without it being too far of a stretch? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Why? How? Yeah. Scary stories, disasters, right? This would be, matter of fact... Because you remember in September we did the series on catastrophes, right? So in October, this could be a good reminder of that, kind of leading up to that series on, uh, leading back to, not up to, leading back to that series on catastrophes and those kind of things and turning it into a flash sale, right? Make sure you're prepared. Have some extra parts on hand just in case catastrophe strikes, right? In case something happens, right? So here's a discount. It may be a, that may be a site-wide thing. Right. right, so we'll do ten percent off or twenty percent off, right, for the two days, thirtieth and thirty-first. He doesn't have a physical location, but yes, I mean, that would be that would be ideal for you know, somebody that has a has a physical location. Yeah, it's somebody with a physical location come in and you know come in with your costume on and get twenty percent off, right? Purchase for the day. Yeah, so that's. That's what I would do is, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to do flash sales with the coupon code, then I'm a, I would like to make the coupon code related to, you know, the whatever your flash sale is, right? So you've got that. All right. November. You got Veterans Day. You got Thanksgiving. You got Black Friday. You got Cyber Monday, right? So we know you got to do Thanksgiving... Black Friday, Cyber Monday, right? You know, you know, you got to do something with that. Okay, again, goes back to expectation of the public, right? So, what do you do? Whereas normally your flash sales will be a one day or a two day, in this month you're going to have a four day, right? Thursday, Friday, well, five day, I guess. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Right? You could cut it off in the middle, but I would let it run Thursday through Monday. Right? Cut it off on Monday. So that way it expires Monday at midnight. Mm, type deal. Um, and, and let it run during that time. Um, you can also do, let's see, this next year, Veterans Day is November the 11th. Um, so you could also do something on Veterans Day. Um, And again, that's not a hard stretch. Okay. In December, of course, we have Christmas. Christmas. Now, the one thing you want to be, we have to be careful about in, um, in email marketing, right? One thing we have to be careful about in email marketing is doing promotions, um, doing set promotions around times that you know the business is also closed. Okay. So in other words, if you're doing a 
flash sale on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and the business is not open to process orders, right? Then you got to make sure that you got to make sure that you do it right. Otherwise, you can end up ticking people off because they don't, you know, process orders not going to get processed. Now, virtually everyone knows. Even if you drop something in a mailbox on Christmas Day, it ain't going to get mailed out till the next day, right. right? So it's a lot of it has to do with the the carefulness of how an order has to be processed, right? So if you're doing something, flash sales or something like that, where someone has to physically answer the phone or they have to be able to interact with a person in order to complete the order, then you don't necessarily want to do that. You don't at all want to do that on days that the business itself will be closed because then you, you're going to end up with people trying to place orders and they can't, right? E-commerce is a little different because a person can place an order 24-7, Right? It's just a matter of when will the order be fulfilled. Right? But the type of business will, det will also determine when you can run it. I mean, you, you, look at, you look at a lot of this stuff on here. For us, for example, we're closed Easter. Well, Easter's on a Sunday anyway. And so that's, we're, we're always closed on Sundays. Right? Um, you look at well, Halloween, we don't really usually close. We're always closed Independence Day. We close, we close Veterans Day, or let's see, we close Labor Day, we close Memorial Day. We don't close Veterans Day always. Um, so we're always closed Easter. We're always closed Fourth of July. We're always closed Thanksgiving. We're always closed Christmas, right? So we're always closed during these times. And for our business, our business is higher touch, right? So we've got to get people to call, schedule appointments, and do those kinds of things, right? And so we don't want to promote, you know, hey, call today or, you know, hey, sign up for, for this today and get a discount if they call the office to sign up for something and nobody's here, right? So it means that you have to be careful, even though you, so even though we may, you may have a Christmas promotion in our world, there may be a Christmas promotion, it's going to be before Christmas, right? Or you may do a slightly after Christmas, it won't necessarily be Christmas day type deal, right? So just got to be aware of those adjustments that need to be made. All right, so that's got our holidays planned, the understanding behind holidays, why, why we choose what we choose, the flash sale concept and all that. Next, um, next we'll be getting into the other lead-ups and how we break down each week of the month as to what we're going to do and what we want to talk about during these, these times that will lead up and lead after these things. Does that make sense?